Hello, and welcome to Chabot News for November 20th, 2019. My name is Brenda, and in today's news, we will be covering the new Hayward Shelter and what some moms are doing for housing. Our man on the street, Will, is going to ask about the ongoing debate of pancakes versus waffles. In sports, Will will tell us what's going on, on and off the field. All that and more coming up on Chabot News. In today's local news, a new homeless shelter in Hayward will open on Monday, November 25th. The shelter will provide transitional housing and services for up to 45 homeless people living in and around the Hayward area. The shelter is located in Hayward's industrial zone on the corner of White Cell Street and Depot Road. The shelter will be staffed 24 hours a day and seven days. Officials say the goal is to have every resident placed into permanent housing within three months. 45 residents will be moving in slowly over the next few weeks, with the first group arriving Monday. In other local news, two Oakland mothers took matters into their own hands Monday by taking control of a vacant West Oakland house. In front of a crowd of supporters, community members and media, 34-year-old Dominique Walker and 41-year-old Samira Karim moved their belongings into a house on Mongolia Street that they say has been sitting empty for two years. It was the first step in what they hope will snowball into a larger movement to take back vacant, investor-owned houses in their neighborhoods where single, working mothers like themselves grew up but can no longer afford. Those empty properties could be better used to house people like Walker and Kareem. That's all for local news. Let's go to Savannah and find out what's happening in pulp culture. Thank you, Brenda. This year, the Grammy nominees just got announced. Lizzo takes center stage from, from the announcement being nominated a total of eight times in categories like Best New Artist, Album of the Year, Record of the Year, and Song of the Year. Seems like the truth definitely won't be hurting for Lizzo in 2020. Not to take away from all the exciting and overshadow the likes of both Billie Eilish and Lil Nas X, who are closely behind with six nominees. Also, other notable nominees include Ariana Grande, who earned her first Album of the Year nod for Thank You Next. The Grammys are scheduled to air on January 26th on CBS. A follow-up to, or to the DC origin story Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, which has just become the first R-rated film to cross the one billion mark, is reportedly in the works with director Todd Phillips in talks to direct last month, in talks to direct. Last month, Phillips sat down with Warner Brothers to propose a roster of DC characters' origin stories. The studio reportedly talked at the multi-film concept, understandably protective of their DC intellectual property, but Phillips did not leave the meeting with the makings of a Joker sequel and a go and a go ahead on one other DC story. It looks like Joker fans who are hoping for a sequel are going to have the last laugh. That's what we got for you in entertainment. Let's go to our man on the street, Will. Hi, my name is William Carter, and we're here with the Man on the Street segment today. And today we're going to ask people pancakes or waffles, and why. All right, I'm here at Chabot, and I'm here with... Ajiani. All right, Ajiani. Now, pancakes or waffles, and why? Pancakes, because uh, they suffer, I guess. I don't know. All right, and I'm here with... Lolly. Okay, and Lolly. So, pancakes or waffles, and why? Um, I'd say pancakes, just because waffles are not, like, that good to me. I don't know, it's just taste, I guess, texture. All right, I'm here with... Geneva Winston. All right, Geneva. Pancakes or waffles, and why? Um, I prefer waffles, just because I like the thickness of the waffles. Pancakes are a little bit too thin for me, so, yeah. All right, and I'm here with... Cam O'Neese. All right, Cam. Now, pancakes or waffles, and why? They're both good, but pancakes are way more savory, a lot more flavor. You can get blueberry, chocolate chip, you can get any flavor you want. Waffles, they give you overcooked, a little too crunchy, a little undercooked, a little soggy. It's pancakes for the win all day. And with this conclusion of the Man on the Street segment, we can see the pancake to waffle tally is three to one, and that people are tripping. And uh, this served me no personal gain, because it's waffles all day. Anyways, back to you guys at the studio. Today in food news, Wendy's founder, Dave Thomas, regrets naming his burger chain after his daughter. The famous burger chain got its name from Dave Thomas's daughter, Wendy Thomas, as a sweet gesture. But Dave apparently regretted that decision after even apologizing to his daughter before his death. Quote, 
My, before my dad left us, we had a long conversation about him naming his restaurant Wendy's, end quote, she recalled. He explained, I should have just named it after myself, but because it put a lot of pressure on you. Wendy Thomas realizes this pressure, but says she must carry on the legacy her father has created. Wendy celebrates its 50th anniversary this month. In other food news, Past Blue Ribbon begins to sell 99 packs of their beer. The pack, becomes, the pack comes in a seven foot long box that has an array of ABV, ranging from their light PBR Easy to their higher strength PBR Extra. The amount of beer in these packs are the equivalent to half a keg. The idea to market these 99 packs started from a Facebook post that advertised a limited edition family pack for $59.99. Surprisingly, the offer sold out in under 24 hours, which sparked national interest. The only downside of this outrageous offer is that it is only available in 15 states, California included. Now, let's go to Anthony out in the wind. Thanks, Savannah. We are here in the very windy weather on Chabot campus. Um, it is, was a 70, sunny, sunny day. Um, tomorrow's going to be about 66 degrees, also sunny. Um, there's a guy recording me, but it's fine. But um, Friday is also going to be 66 degrees and sunny, but this weekend is going to be very cold. So get, get yourself a snuggle buddy and get, get snuggle up because it's going to be windy, cloudy, 64 degrees both days, Saturday and Sunday. Um, thanks to the KCTH. Um, back to you, Brenda. Thanks, Anthony. Stay warm out there. It's that time of year where many students here at Chabot are registering for classes and applying to colleges for transfer. As we plan our futures, we want to keep in mind our end goal. Where do you want to go as the next step in your career? How can you achieve your goals? If you're not sure about the answers to these questions, you're in luck. Here at Chabot College, there will be a workshop to help people like you. The workshop is Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. It will be held on Friday, December 6th from 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m in the event center across from building 700. Give yourself an extra lift in your future. Finals are just around the corner. That means stressing over studying and preparing for exams and projects. Many people believe that just studying is enough, but actually knowing how you study best is key. Join in on the TRIO program workshop on Monday, December 9th from 12 to 2 p.m. in room 758 in the conference room on the second floor. The, a trio, the TRIO Aspire Excel Finals Study Skills Social is, quote, a study social to cheer students on for finals week, end quote. Take a deep breath and invest some time in a study social this December. On to sports. Let's go to Will to see what's happening on the field. In today's sports news, the NFL's Thursday night game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns made it a night to remember, but not in a good way. A uh, melee involving both teams resulted in Steelers center Marquise Pouncey being suspended three games for kicking and punching Browns defensive end Miles Garrett. After Garrett hit Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph in the head with the helmet he'd been wearing before Garrett tore it off. Garrett has been suspended for at least the rest of this regular season and Browns defensive end Larry Ogunjobi was suspended for one game for hitting Mason Rudolph from behind in, during the incident. All three players are appealing their suspensions and many others are expected to be fined. The group includes Rudolph, who tried to rip Garrett's helmet off earlier in the fight and who some thought should have been suspended for, for sparking the melee in the first place. In other sports news, the Patriots released wide receiver Antonio Brown on September 20th, just 11 days after signing him. Two days later, Brown called out Kra Robert Kraft and Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger, comparing their legal issues with his own. Brown was referring to, to Kraft's ongoing case in Florida, in which he was charged with the solicitation for allegedly receiving a sex act at a massage parlor. And Ro Roethlisberger's four-game suspension in 2010 for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy based on a sexual assault accusation. With that being said, Brown posted an apology to New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft on Instagram on Tuesday. Brown wrote, Mr. Kraft, I apologize sincerely to you and your organization. All I wanted to do was be an asset to the organization and sorry for the bad media and the drama. Thank you, sincerely, A.B. Brown's apology came just five days after he met with the NFL due to an address to a sexual assault allegations against him. But is the apology genuine? We'll just have to see. That's all for sports, and back to you, Brenda. Thanks, Will. That's all for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the Mass Communications Department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash Stay tuned to KCTH Channel 27 for more Shabot TV.